this video we're going to do truth tables for more complex well-formed formulas so by the end you should be able to build truth tables for both of these and we're going to learn how to do them in two different ways so drawing a truth table step by step according to each well-formed formula that gets its own column or just doing a giant grid of numbers we'll do both so let's take a look at this when we build a complex woof we compose it according to their syntactic rules, and we can build a truth table according to that. So I just have one example of this. So for instance, if we have, uh, basically every time we have a well-formed formula, we need a column for it. So we need a column for all the values of P, all the values of Q, and well, all the values of P. So we really just need to do it once. But we also need a column with the values for not P, because we're taking P and we're taking the negation together. Uh, with Q arrow P, we need a column for that. And we need these two columns, not p and q arrow p, in order to find the truth value of not p and q arrow p. So uh, we use the rules that we did from the previous video. So I won't write those out again, but I'll explain them as we go through. So the first one, I've written out all the different combinations of p and q. And basically, from Q, we alternate 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, all the way down. That'd be the rightmost one. Then we go left, and we go 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, continuing as many times as we need. So basically, we double up each time, and this gives us all the different possible combinations of truth values. So with two propositions, we have four possible combinations. If we had three propositions, we would have eight different rows in a truth table. So first one we have to find is not P because we're taking p, we're adding the negation to it. So remember p and not p, these just take the opposite value. So whatever is true for p is going to be false for not p and vice versa. So if p is true, then not p is false. In the second row, p is true, so not p is false. In the third row, p is false, so not p is true. And in the fourth row, p is false, so not p is true. Okay. Now we have not p finished, so let's do q arrow p. And remember the way that q arrow p works is that it is false if we have q true and p is false. So otherwise it's going to be true. So in the first line we have 1 to 1, so that's going to be true. q arrow p, q is true, p is true, that's okay. In the second row, Q is false, P is true, so we're going to have 0, arrow 1. This is also going to be true. Whenever the antecedent is false, the conditional is true. In the third row, though, third row, we're going to have 1, arrow 0. So this is the only case where the conditional is false. So Q, arrow P in this case will be false. And then in the fourth row, we're going to have uh, 0, arrow 0, and this is fine. This is going to be true. So for Q, arrow P, our column is going to be 1, 1, 0, 1. Now, our final one, we're taking not P, we're taking Q, R, O, P, we're using the conjunction. So remember how the conjunction works is it's only true if both sides of the conjunction are true. So not P is true, and then Q, R, O, P is true. If both of those things happen, then the entire thing will be true. So in the first line, we have 0 and 1. So both of these have to be 1. So First row is false because not p is false. In the second row, uh, not p is false, q arrow p is true, so this is going to be false because not p is false. In the third row, well now not p is true, but q arrow p is false. Uh, therefore, because at least one of these two are false, uh, not p and q arrow p is also going to be false. But in the final row, not p is true, q arrow p is true, so both sides are true, therefore both of those with the conjunction are going to be true. So our final truth table here for not P and Q arrow P, we know that the value is going to be false, 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 true. So that well-formed formula is only true when both P and Q happen to be false. So these are the conditions required to make this formula true. So that's how we can do this where each column is its own well-formed formula. Now, this takes a little bit of time to write out. So, what I want to show you is a quicker method for truth tables. And this is where we just write the formula once, and we put all of our values underneath the operators and the propositions. 
So the first thing we do is we set up our truth table by putting ones and zeros under all the different propositions. So for instance, with P, P's are going to be one, one, zero, zero. So two cases where P is true, two cases where P is false. And for Q, uh, we're gonna have two cases where Q is true, two cases where Q is false, so we're gonna alternate them. So row one and three will be true, and then row two and four will be false. Okay, so now what we do is whenever we do an operation, like for instance, we wanna find the value of Q arrow P first, and this is the same one we just did. So Q arrow P, we're going to write the truth table for Q arrow P just right under the arrow. So in this case, Q arrow P, we have one arrow one, that's true. Uh, zero arrow one, that is true. The case where it is false is if we have one arrow zero, so the third row is false, and the fourth row zero arrow zero, this is true. So we just did this one, one one zero one, that's what we get for Q arrow P. Now, we know that not P is together as a unit. I didn't put the brackets in there because typically we can get rid of those if we have a negation and it's just off on its own, oh, but I'll put them in there for clarity. So next we have to do not P. So remember the negation of P just takes the opposite value of P. So if P is one, not P is zero. If P is one, not P is zero. And in the final two rows, P is zero, so not P would be one. Okay, so this is just the row here for not P. Now, under this final row, the conjunction, this is where we take the two on the side. So we take not P and we take Q arrow P. So the reason these quicker truth tables can be a little bit more confusing is because we have to keep track of where we're getting the values from. So for this one, we're getting the values from our two connectives. We're getting them from the not column, we're getting them from the arrow column. So when we take the conjunction here, well, we're taking a look at zero and one. Well, uh, one of those is false, so the conjunction's false. In the second row, oh look, the negation's false as well, so at least one of those are false. So the second row is false. In the third row, we have a one for our negation, but we have a zero for our conditional. So at least one of those is false, so the third row is false. And finally, in the last, in the last row, we have a one for the negation, we have a one for the arrow, therefore both of those are true, so the conjunction is true. So this is another way of doing your truth tables, and it is usually common courtesy just to put a little arrow underneath the final operator or the main operator so we know what the value of the entire formula is. So this is the main result from this truth table. So you start by assigning ones and zeros to your propositions, and then you fill in the truth values for all the complex well-formed formulas based on how it's constructed. So two ways of doing the same truth table. Now I have two examples to do. So this is A arrow B or A and B arrow not B. So I'm going to start off by filling in all of the columns for A and B. So A's will all be 1100 zero, zero, and B's will all be 1010. Zero, zero. So I'm going to fill in the ones first just because of the way that I have my setup. It's difficult to change colors super quickly. So we'll do this. Okay, so here we have a setup. Now we have to go operator by operator. So we have to really understand how this was put together. So the first one I wanna do is the arrow, because A arrow B is a unit. So we know this is true as long as we don't have A true and B false. So it's going to be true with one arrow one, it's going to be false with one arrow zero, it's going to be true with zero arrow one, and it's gonna be true with zero arrow zero. So that's our truth table for the arrow. Now we can forget about this one for a bit. Next one we're going to do is AND for A and B. So this is taking information from A and information from B. So remember A and B is true when A is true and B is true. So it's true in the first row because A and B are both true, but in the second, third, and fourth row it's going to be false because at least one of A and B is false. So we finish the AND there. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to work on not B. So we're gonna work on the negation. That information comes from B. So remember, whenever B is true, not B is false. So not B is false in this first and third rows. 
and in the second and fourth row, b is false, therefore not b is true. So it's just flipping the value. Okay, so as you can see, we just have like this grid of numbers now, so it's hard sometimes to keep track of what we're looking at. Uh, so we're going to do the arrow next, because we now know the value of the AND, and we know the value of the negation. So the arrow is taking both of these two things in mind. And remember, the conditional is false if we have one arrow zero. It's true every other case. So in the first row, we have a one under the AND and a zero under the negation, so the arrow is false. In the second, third, and fourth row, which I'll put an orange tick under, we see that the antecedent, the AND, is always false. Therefore, the second, third, and fourth, the second, third, and fourth rows will be true. Okay. Finally, one more to go. We have the OR here, and this is taking information from the conditional. I won't put an arrow there. I'll just leave a line. And it's taking information from the conditional. So it's basically taking the info from these two well-formed formulas that are joined together by OR. So remember the way that OR works is it's true if at least one of those is true. So at this point, sometimes if I have a thing that I can easily erase, I like to just put little boxes around the lines I'm looking at so I remember which ones to compare. So I'm comparing these two. So it's true if at least one of those is true. So in the first row, well, the conditional's true, so that's fine. In the second row, the conditional on the right is true. And in the third and fourth row, they're both true. So in the end, if I get rid of now all this mess here, our final output is this row right here. So this well-formed formula is true in every situation. If A is true, B is true, A true, B false, a false be true, or a be both false, thing is true no matter what. So that's one example. Let's do one more example, and this time I have three propositions so that way we can see how this is built. So with a, we're going to have eight lines, because two times two times two possibilities. So a is one 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 zero 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 zero. For b, we're going to do one one zero zero, and we're going to do one one zero zero again so every time i see b i'm going to do that same thing one one zero zero one one zero zero i'll now fill in the zeros in red and now for c i'm going to alternate one zero one zero one zero one zero so i'll put a one in the first third and fifth and seventh rows hopefully this lines up nicely and i'll put zeros in the second fourth sixth and eighth rows. So this is just step one. This is just filling in ones and zeros for our propositions. Now we have to go line by line. So first I'm going to take C and B. I'm getting information here from C and B. C and B is true when both C and B are true. So uh, every time we see one one side by side, we'll put a one in. So in the first row that happens, in the fifth row that happens, and every other row here, it's going to be false because at least one of C and B are false. Okay, so that's the conjunction C and B. Uh, what next? Well, let's do OR. Why not? So this OR is going to take information from A, and it's going to take information from the conjunction. So remember, OR is true if at least one of those is true. In the first four rows, A is true, so our disjunction will be true. In the fifth row, the conjunction here is true with one, so this will be true. But in, then in the last three rows, uh, both C and B and A are false, so we end up with zeros in our last three rows there. Okay, so the left well-formed formula on the biconditional is uh, already done. Now we can do B arrow not C. So first we have to do the not, and that information comes from C. So C is just one zero one zero one zero one zero, so the negation will flip that. So we're going to have zeros where all the ones are, and we're going to have ones where all the zeros are. So that gives us not C. Next, we're going to look at the conditional here. That's going to take information from B and information from the negation. And remember, the only time this is false is if we have one arrow zero. So that happens in line one, and it happens in line five. In every other case, it'll be true, because we have one arrow one, zero arrow zero, zero arrow one. All of those are fine. 
Okay. Oops. Now we have our final column, our main connective. And that's going to take information from C and B or A, and it's going to take information from B arrow not C. So put my bracket back in, and like I did the last time, I'm going to highlight the two columns where I'm taking information from just to make it easier for me to find. And that way I don't accidentally take information from another column. So the biconditional is true if both of the values are the same. So in the first row, we have 1, we have 0. These are different, so the biconditional is false. In the second row, uh, we have 1 and 1, so that's going to be true. They're the same. It's going to be true in the third row because both 1 and 1. In the fourth row, 1 and 1. Oh, in the fifth row, we have 1 and 0, so these are different. This will be false. And then in the final three rows, uh, we have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, so those values are different. So these are also all false. Okay, so we've now finished our truth table. It is a monster with eight rows. It looks like a giant mess at some point. So when you do this method, it does get messy, but we can indicate that this is our final operator here. And if we want to highlight it so we know what matters, there we go. So that's the truth table for C and B or A, if and only if B arrow not C. So now that this is done, you should now be able to answer these questions. So I have two truth tables here. Try drawing them out on your own, and there will be a solution video within 24 hours. So if you have any questions, feel free to post them down in the comments below, and I'll answer them as soon as I can.